Welcome back to How To Tableau. In this episode, we're gonna show you how to make waterfall charts. And you might be taking a double take, like you already made that video, but in this video, we're gonna look specifically at what happens when you're making a waterfall chart with multiple dimensions. Before we had a single dimension uh, and a single measure, this time we've got multiple measures, multiple dimensions. How are we gonna handle that situation? I'll give you a trick. We're gonna create a separate data source. It's a really simple data source, so it shouldn't be too much of uh, difficulty for us. Once you see it, it'll make sense. Uh, but that said, we're gonna use the Superstore data set. We're gonna modify it, but let's jump into the video right now. So here we are, we're inside of Tableau. We're going to build out this waterfall chart that you see here. It's a really generic waterfall chart. We have MSRP sort of as our first bar and then promo costs bringing those values down. Then we have kind of this subtotal of sales and then some additional costs and then finally what we're left over for profit. And then we have a parameter here that acts as a filter that allows us to filter uh, our data out. Uh, works almost perfectly and and the thing is about this is we've got a whole bunch of measures and we have zero dimensions. Usually we're talking about one measure, one dimension to make our waterfall charts. We have a very different scenario playing out here. How do we build out this waterfall chart? Well, the trick for all of this is we're actually going to use a secondary data set that I'm going to call values here. We'll take a look at it in a second, but then we're going to do a blend with our original data set that has all of these extra measures in here. Not just one measure, but many measures. So how are we going to do that? Let's just jump into a completely blank workbook. I'm going to already have connected to the data sources. Inside, I've got my two data sources. I've got this new modified Superstore data set with multiple measures that we're ultimately going to make our waterfall chart. And I've got this other data set called values. So let's take a look at the, the values data set that we have in here. It's actually just one column called values that goes from one to 10. And it really could go one to 100, one to 1000. It doesn't really matter as long as I have seven values here. And those seven values represent the seven dimensions that I'm gonna use to build out this waterfall chart. MSRP, uh, promo cost, sales, overhead costs, manufacturing costs, transportation costs, and profit. I'm gonna use those seven. I've got a few more, but I really only wanna use those for this visualization. Let's start by creating this waterfall chart. Our first calculation, I'm gonna actually save us some time. I'm just gonna copy and paste in the calculation itself so that we can see what we're gonna work with. And I need to do this calculation on my values data set, not on the orders data set, but the, the values. I'm just gonna copy and paste this in, and you'll notice that I'm just saying when min the min values, then return these labels. So I'm just gonna call this labels. This is gonna give us the labels on our chart, basically the different categories that we're gonna work with. So first we wanna establish the labels, then we wanna establish the start points for our Gantt bar chart, and then we'll figure out the bar size, and then we'll add color. So really four calculations, and we'll throw in a fifth that connects the lines, to the bars together with an individual line. So I'm just gonna take label here, I'm gonna hit okay, bring label out onto columns, it just says MSRP, but once I bring values out onto uh, detail as a dimension, you'll see it breaks out uh, my values into the different categories. And now I'm just gonna reorder these. So we're gonna always start with MSRP, and then we're going to show promo costs, so just like the cost of running promotions, whether it's discounting or the actual, the promotion itself, then a subtotal of our actual sales values, then we're gonna show manufacturing cost, followed by transportation costs, then overhead cost and profit. So that gives us our labels. The next thing we need to do is figure out the values for our rows. And the way we're gonna do this is once again, we're gonna create another calculated field. We're gonna use case. We're gonna use case basically for all of these. For every single placeholder of one through seven, we need to specify and basically bring in values to do this. And this is where things are gonna get a little bit more complicated. It was pretty straightforward with labels. To begin with, now is where things get a little more, uh, a little more funky. Again, we're going to just type out case, 
and we're gonna use min and type out values. And the reason we're gonna use min is because in a second we're gonna do a blend with the uh, orders data set. And when we do that, it's gonna come in as an aggregate. So I'm gonna say win one, then zero. So our first value MSRP is gonna start at zero. And then win two, then we basically wanna bring in the aggregation of MSRP from that orders data set for the adjusted data set. Uh, win uh, three for our sales value. I'm actually gonna start that back at zero. It's just how the data so set is set up here, but that's gonna give us that value. And then uh, win four, then we want sales. Win five, then I want sales. Uh, and then plus manufacturing is a negative value in this data set, so I'm gonna still keep it as a plus. Manufacturing cost, win six, then I want to return all these values here, plus uh, transportation costs. And then uh, finally, I'm gonna take all these values and hopefully I will have done this correctly the first go around, but win seven for profit is basically the sum of all those values. And I forgot the then statement here. So just make sure I get that in there. And then transportation plus the overhead costs. And then I'm just gonna hit enter and type in end. And this is gonna be our bar start. So I'm just gonna call it start for now and hit okay. And we're just gonna click and drag this out into rows. We're gonna uh, get some null values. These nulls are because we didn't specify eight, nine, 10 in our data set. So I'm gonna exclude those values. It gets rid of them. Uh, and you'll see MSRP doesn't show a value. Promo cost is way up here. That's gonna come down. Then sales, we're gonna shoot back up and hopefully this will be the sales value. And then each of the subsequent values, fingers crossed that we've hit all these labels correctly. Um, the way we can test that is actually creating the bar height. So I'm just gonna call this bars. And now we're gonna create basically the calculation for each of those values. Once again, using the case statement, we're gonna say min of value. And then we'll say win one then we wanna return uh, MSRP. Again, that's gonna be an aggregation. When two, then um, promo costs. And we're essentially typing it out the exact value we want for all of these bars. So three is sales, uh, four is then manufacturing. And I'm just gonna fast forward all right, I've got this calculation, all the values are listed out, and now the one thing I just need to do is actually uh, place this right on the bar size. So I'm just click and drag bars and hope this is correct. And it actually looks uh, mostly correct. The only one I've messed up is profit, and that's my start point. So I'm just gonna, uh, and I, again, I only know this because it's the way my data uh, is structured. It might vary for each of you, but the the idea is we need to figure out where the starts and the ends are for our again bars. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna edit my start and I'm gonna change um, my profit value here uh, to zero. And I'll hit okay and my profit value, it'll always be fixed to the right value from, from here on out. Um, uh, what we're gonna do f is get the color in here and the color is actually pretty easy because we can just, um, I'm actually gonna do this on the fly. I haven't done this to date is I'm just gonna kind of say, uh, what's the sign? And this could totally go in the wrong direction as I try this out, but let's just say um, the sign of the bars and uh, it works. So I'm just gonna call this color and I'm gonna take color and place this out onto color and you'll see the negative values are red and um, if I just, let's make this a little bit bigger so we can actually see what's going on and zoom into the workbook as well. So now when you take a look, you'll see that we've got exactly what we're looking for. We just need to add in the lines. That's the last little bit uh, to make this visualization pop. Um, and then let's get this line in there. So the line is a little bit more difficult because it's, it's not always a straightforward calculation. Um, we're going to do this by adding another value on rows and then we're going to create a dual axis. And our first value where we want the line to start is actually going to on one. Uh, 
So we'll take this, figure out the calculation for what the value is on one here, and then the second value is at the bottom of the line. Then we're basically going to draw that straight across on the third line, then all the way down to manufacturing at the bottom, transportation, overhead, and then kind of end it at the top of profit. And this will take a little bit of finesse work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save us some time, and I'm going to copy and paste it in. So here you have it. Here's our line calculation. Um, I'm just going to call this lines. And you'll see, um, basically, this first value is the start of the top of MSRP. And then the second line, again, comes down to the bottom here of this label and so on. But I'm just going to hit OK. And now if I bring this out onto my view and I change my mark type to line, and let's uh, get rid of the sizing on there. In fact, let's get rid of color. Let's really shrink this down. And let's not be afraid to just make this like a light gray and get rid of the labels. You're thinking, oh, that's that. when we do our dual axis here, it's not going to look correct. And of course, it doesn't look correct yet. Um, I'm going to synchronize these axes. And in fact, let's just swap the order so the bars are in front. If we change our line type, this is a big point. We just need to change it to a stepped line path. And now we'll sort of have our eye following those bars all the way down. So there it is. But what if you want to add a filter? That's going to be one of your first questions. Well, you can certainly add a filter. So if we were just to like go to region and right click, and we could technically, uh, you know, bring this out on the view, and then we could select any value and uh, right click. Let's show this as an end user filter. It would show up, and we'd have the ability to multi-select. If you don't want null, null is definitely going to show up, uh, just because we're using a blend. But if you didn't want it to show up, you could use a parameter. And to, to create that parameter, all we would need to do is just, you know, right click on region and uh, create a parameter. And so I'm just going to create parameter and it loads in all those values. And I'm going to actually add another value in here for all. And then I'm just going to drag this up to the top, hit OK. And then let's just show that region parameter. Boom, it shows up. Now it's kind of functioning as a filter in many ways. If you want multi-select, there's other ways to do multi-select parameters. I'd recommend that you check out our Tessellation website and check out the blog post. I'll actually post a link in this video. So if you want to check out how to have multi-select parameters, we've got that for you. It's a great use case for this particular video. And then finally, we just need to actually make this parameter work now. So we're just going to create a new calculated field or say um, uh, if um, the region parameter is equal to all, then true, else uh, we're going to want that region parameter to be equal to region. And then we'll just call this region tf for a boolean that we're going to ultimately return. And then I'm just going to click and replace region up here because we don't need both values showing. And I'll choose true uh, from this drop down. And you'll notice that filter went away. Now it works with central. You'll see these values updating over here on the labels. I just hide lines for my label. I just It's descriptive for this particular visualization. But that's it. Um, that's this video. We have five calculations that I just want to make sure that we're clear on. First, we had to get our labels for our values. Then we had to get the bar heights. Then we had to get the actual, um, or at least the bar uh, start points. And then we'll get the heights. And then that fourth step is adding color. And then the fifth is adding this line that allows us our eye to follow the waterfall chart the way that we want. So there you have it. Multiple dimensions. Let's wrap this up. So there you have it. That's how we're going to blend multiple measures together to build a single water vulture. It's actually a pretty straightforward setup once you figure out how it's going to work. And what's great about this template and this setup is it works across any data source. Once you've done it once, it can work over and over, totally repeatable. Uh, if you have to bring in new measures dimensions, of course, you got to update that that data, but when we're talking about legacy systems or systems that are going to be lasting within large organizations, you don't expect them to change too much. So that's our video. If you like this video, be sure to like it. If you have any ideas for future videos, leave it in the comments down below. And of course, if you want to see these videos as soon as they come out, 
be sure to subscribe to our Data Coach channel. We've got videos coming out in Tableau, Altrix, and Power BI. Stay tuned. Uh, and next week we'll be talking about something great. I'm not sure even what it's going to be at this point. Uh, I could, you know, go on my computer right now and look it up. But you know what? I'll leave it as a surprise. Thanks again for tuning in.